Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you 10 reasons why the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II X is an awesome mirrorless camera. This will come from a practical hands-on experience point of view, rather than just a specification overview. There's plenty of those videos online and you can find them. This will come from using this camera with hands-on experience, as well as owning two Panasonic S5 Mark IIs. I actually purchased a second one of these recently because it's such a great camera. Before we get going, a huge thank you to Panasonic for the loan of the S5 Mark II X. I don't get to keep it, no money's changed hands, and all thoughts about this are my own. Let's get into it. The first reason why the S5 Mark II X is awesome is thanks to its active cooling and no overheating. Unlike the Sony ZV-E1, which was recently released, it's having all kinds of issues with overheating. These are tested up to 40 degrees Celsius, and after reviewing the original S5 out in the park on a hot summer's day, I was able to test this with no overheating up at 39 degrees Celsius, making the S5 Mark II X one of the most reliable cameras on the market, thanks to that active cooling. The active cooling doesn't really add any bulk to the camera, which is fantastic. If you take a look under the Lumix logo, you can see where the air actually gets taken in, and then it gets expelled through the vents on the side. Like most Lumix camera features, we get full control over the fan speed. We've got one of two automatic modes, or you can set it from slow, medium, or high, where it runs continuously. Overheating shouldn't even be a conversation in 2023, and after testing the S5 Mark II extensively in summer, the S5 Mark II X will be just as reliable. The second reason why the S5 Mark II X is awesome is its overall image quality. This is a no-brainer, especially if you're shooting video. Pairing this image processor with a full frame sensor allows us to get 14 plus stops of dynamic range when shooting in vlog. This camera also gives us a dual native ISO of 640 and 4000. So if you plan on shooting in low light, you're going to get excellent results. If you've never shot with a Panasonic camera before, we get lots of great picture profiles, which enhances the overall end result. What I'm shooting in right now on my S5 Mark II is a natural picture profile and this gives me great straight out of camera results. I'm also shooting on the GH6 in the natural picture profile because it just gives you a really great end result. If you plan on shooting in vlog, it's easy to grade in post, or of course you can just load a LUT in at the time of filming. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. While there is a 1.5 times crop, if you plan on shooting in 4K 50 or 60 frames per second, it still looks great to my eye. Nearly all of the thumbnails I make out in the park were shot using 4K 60 mode. I think it looks great. What sets this series of cameras apart from a lot of other options on the market is we can shoot in open gate, which makes this perfect if you plan on shooting any sort of anamorphic, or if you're gonna be doing social media, you can crop vertically and still get excellent resolution. The image quality on this is fantastic, and I would have no problems recommending it for someone looking for a pro camera. The third thing that makes the Panasonic S5 Mark II X awesome is its real-time LUT loader option. This allows you to burn in your favorite LUT at the time of recording to save doing all of that in post-production. The camera can support up to 10 different LUTs and you can select them like you would any other picture profile. Where I find this especially helpful is shooting out in the park on a bright sunny day. I usually shoot in vlog so I capture the most amount of dynamic range and I burn in the nicest LUT and most of my work is already done. I'll only have to adjust the contrast and saturation a little bit in post and that's it. It's a much more time effective way of working. Just know if you do burn in your LUT at the time of recording, there's no way to take it off. So just make sure you don't need to match that footage to any other camera system. The fourth reason why this camera is fantastic is its in-body image stabilization, which Panasonic call Active IS. This allows you to get some of the best follow shots I've ever been able to get out of any camera. This is superior to Micro Four Thirds when it comes to its in-body image stabilization system. It's insane and taking it to the next level, we get our IS boost mode, which allows you to get an almost tripod looking shot handheld. This was a feature going back to the GH5 and it's been improved in the S5 Mark II and S5 Mark II X. The handheld results out of this camera are fantastic all the way down to about 20 millimeters. Any wider than that, and you can see some warpy stuff in the corners, but if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens handheld, you're going to get excellent results. I was able to get great follow shots using all different types of lenses and this camera. And to my eye, the end result looked even smoother than my GH6. If you're like me and you don't like post stabilizing all of your clips after the fact, get an S5 Mark II or X. The handheld results make it worth it just on its own. 
The fifth reason you're going to love this camera is its autofocus performance. And as someone who owns a Sony a7S III and Sony FX3, I can tell you that the autofocus performance on the S5 Mark II X has some advantages, and it also is a little bit different in how it operates. So not only do we get face and eye tracking, we can turn off all the modes altogether, but we can also have body tracking, which is a lot more intuitive. Say, for example, I wanted to hold this up to the camera on my Sony, I would have to cover my face entirely, which means it's annoying to get it positioned in the right spot. It's just a bit of a pain. With body tracking, I can just glance over my face and it will know that I want to showcase something in the shot. This is something that often goes overlooked. Not only is the autofocus more responsive on the S5 Mark IIx, it will find you in frame further back than on the Sony. This was a huge eye opener. Now, while the autofocus isn't as good at close distance as the Sony, Overall, for autofocus performance, I love what the S5 Mark II X is doing. And for its first iteration of phase hybrid autofocus, I think it's every bit as good or just that slightly bit different to what Sony's putting out right now. So if you want to do this kind of stuff, you'll have no problems with the S5 Mark II X. Maybe my favorite thing about the S5 Mark II and X is its grip. This is right up there, along with some classics like the GH6, the OMD EM1 Mark II from Olympus and the Sony FX3. I think this grip feels every bit as good in the hand. We get a nice chunky purchase on the camera and our knuckles aren't smashing against the lens. See how much space I've got between here and here? This may vary between lens to lens, but with this 50 millimeter F1.8, I have no problems maintaining my grip on the camera without my knuckles smashing against the lens. This was a massive problem on my Sony a7C. For guys with big hands like myself, get a camera with a big grip, shooting handheld with this, with all of the buttons and dials in intuitive positions will make a whole lot of sense long term. So if you're a handheld shooter, the grip on this is fantastic. The great news is the S5 Mark II X and the original S5 Mark II are identical to each other when it comes to their button, dial placement, body design, everything is exactly the same. They're both identical weights, so irrespective of which camera you choose, they both feel great in the hand. Reason 7 you're going to love the S5 Mark II X is its recording mode. So in the MP4 menu, we get a couple of 8-bit codecs, but essentially this is a 10-bit camera only. If we go through MOV, we get every type of resolution and file format. We can record in 420 or 422 10-bit. We get lots of different resolution options all the way from 1080p up to 6K open gate. This camera is capable of shooting in 24, 25 or 30 frames per second in full HD and 4K. Additionally, we also get 3.3K, which is great if you plan on shooting anamorphic. Once you expand that, it actually gives you more pixels than 4K. We also get DCI 4K up to 60 frames per second. This is great if you want to apply some slow motion into a short film. Unlike other cine cameras on the market, as you can see, we can shoot in either 6K with a 17 by 9 aspect ratio, that's 4 to 0, 10 bit, or all the way up to 3 by 2 6K, which is the full sensor readout. This full sensor readout isn't just for cropping in post, although of course you can do that. You can also shoot with an anamorphic lens in that mode and get a massive amount of pixels. Not only can we shoot in MP4 or MOV, this camera is capable of shooting ProRes internal or to an external SSD. Furthermore, we can also shoot in the all intra codecs, which is a less compressed file format at the expense of much larger files. Thanks to the HDMI output on the side of the camera, it allows us to record to an external recorder shooting Blackmagic RAW. So if you want to adjust everything from your white balance and color, all in post, then shooting RAW is the way to go. But if you don't need all of those high-end features, you can shoot in MOV and get fantastic results. Whether you're a content creator or full-time videographer, the S5 Mark II X has just about every mode you could ask for. Just know if you plan on shooting in ProRes or All Intra, then I can highly recommend recording to an external SSD. This can be done just by plugging in the appropriate drive to the USB-C port on the side of the camera. Like the original S5 and the S5 Mark II, the X is also capable of shooting up to 180 frames per second in full HD. Now, unfortunately, there's no 4K at 120 frames per second. I would have loved to have seen that even with a crop. So maybe that can come in a future firmware upgrade. But this is a really powerful camera and the slow motion results still shooting with that full sensor reader look pretty great to my eye. 
Reason 8, the S5 Mark II X is awesome is for its lens selection. A camera system is no good if the lens system doesn't have anything to offer. The S series of primes are my favorite video lenses. I own Sony G Master lenses. I think these are much better because they're more consistent in terms of their design. They don't suffer any excessive focus breathing and they're optically really great value considering what you get. I think when some people say, hey, there's no great lenses for the S5 or S5 Mark II, what they're really saying is there's no affordable lenses. And I would agree with that. These lenses might not be the cheapest on the market, but they're optically superior to much more expensive lenses. And I love their consistency. Unlike other brands where one lens might be this big, the next one might be huge. These are all basically physically identical. If you switch between the 85 and 24 millimeter, for example, you're going to have exactly the same experience. Now, if you're not into primes and you just want to get started with a kit lens, this is one of the best kit lenses I've used. It's the 20 to 60 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6. I use this so often when I'm outdoors shooting in the park. F3.5 is a really good way of showcasing a little bit about what's going on around you if you're outdoors in an interesting location. This lens is optically corrected for focus breathing. So if you're a video shooter, I think you'll get a kick out of it. Now, if you're looking for a pro zoom, you can absolutely get it for the L mount. This is the 24 to 70 S Pro. This is an f2.8 constant zoom lens. We get a clutch over here for manual focus with a distance rating on it as well. This allows you to get professional video results without the light changing if you plan on zooming in and out. This is massive. This is just on loan from Panasonic. I'm gonna do a full review of this, so stay tuned and subscribe if you're into lens reviews. But overall, I think this kit lens is a great way to get started. And if I'm traveling, I'm taking something much smaller than this with me. <laughs> but the option's there if you wanna shoot some pro work. Reason number nine, the S5 Mark II X is awesome, is it still supports the 4K live crop mode. This is one of my favorite features going all the way back to the original GH5. 4K live crop allows you to pan or zoom in digitally thanks to selecting a start and end point within the 4K live crop options. This makes it easy to get a really great looking pan or zoom without having to move the camera whatsoever. Again, I use this extensively on my original S5 Mark II review and odds are you're seeing some samples of that on screen. It's a really great feature and it's an easy way to get really great B-roll without a lot of work. Reason number 10 you're gonna love the S5 Mark II X is we get matching UHS II SD card slots and these are also hot swappable. Having this hot swapping capability is awesome for long events. So essentially you can record on SD card slot number one. Once it fills up, it will automatically go over to number two. You can take out one while it's recording to the second one put in a blank SD card and keep recording perpetually between each of them as long as you keep hot swapping them out. This means you don't have to turn the camera off. I love this, this is a really great feature. Additionally though, we can also record on the S5 Mark II X using that USB-C out on the side of the camera. This allows you to hook it up to something like a Samsung SSD and get a really cheap storage solution for long form recording or if of course you're recording with the ProRes or all intro recordings where you'll fill up the SD cards very quickly. So overall this is a really powerful camera and I love the simplicity of the dual SD card slots paired with of course that USB connectivity to an external SSD. All right let's give this video some balance. I'm going to talk about the things that I don't love about the S5 Mark II X starting with the live streaming capability. Now it's a fantastic option to have live streaming built into a camera. I actually had this on my GH5 Mark II and it was something that I never used because it was just a little bit too complicated to get started. I feel like the complication of getting this to work with straight up live streaming might go over a lot of people's heads, even with some tutorial video guidance. So if you plan on just using this for live streaming, just know you can't monitor your audience unless you're using a separate device. This is where I still think a phone will make for a far more easy way of getting live streaming if you don't care about the quality too much. But while it's a great feature to have, I hope it's simplified in the future. Let's talk about the phase hybrid autofocus limitations of the S5 Mark II X. This also translates back to the S5 Mark II. When I did my original long in-depth deep review of the S5 Mark II, I tested all modes except one. I can't believe it. I didn't test 1080p at 50 or 60 frames per second, which is the full sensor readout and that drops it back to contrast DFD. This could be a deal breaker if you just want to shoot at 50 or 60 frames per second and you want that great autofocus with the full sensor readout. Neither of these two cameras have that in 1080p. This is a huge bummer. 
I think Panasonic would sell so many more of these S5 Mark IIs and S5 Mark II X to people wanting pro cameras that can stream or multicam with phase hybrid autofocus at 50 or 60 frames per second. A lot of people who stream will want that frame rate and the reliability and consistency of that phase hybrid autofocus. I have my fingers crossed that Panasonic can fix this for both the S5 Mark II X and the S5 Mark II. There's only three minor annoyances. These aren't deal breakers, but it's definitely worth mentioning. You can't turn four channel audio off in camera or at least I haven't worked out how to do it. So this means every time I get a project like this in editing, I have to disable the second stereo track or isolate a single mono track. Not the end of the world, but it would just help my workflow if I didn't have to worry about that whatsoever. The second minor annoyance is if you're using an external monitor of any description, you can't output the HDMI information both to the built-in LCD flippy screen and an external monitor at the same time. It's one or the other. It seems a lot of camera companies are moving in this direction. The original GH5 allows you to have both screens identically set up, which really helps my particular type of workflow. I hope they can bring this back. And thirdly, the S5 Mark II and X are the first two Panasonic cameras that haven't come with an included battery charger. I'm not exactly sure why. You do get a little power supply and USB cable to charge the battery internally. But if you own a second battery, odds are you want to charge that second battery while you're using the one in your camera. I hope they bring this back again on future cameras. Before we wrap this video up, I just wanted to talk about which one to choose if you're sitting on the fence between the S5 Mark II and the X, because some people will think, oh, I'll just buy the X, it has all of these extra codecs. As someone who puts out almost daily videos across a lot of different YouTube channels, the X is complete overkill. If you're a working professional and you're already shooting in all intra, or you plan on shooting in ProRes or Blackmagic RAW, then the S5 2X is an absolute no-brainer. If that's already your workflow, you're going to love it. For everyone else shooting weddings or if you're a content creator, the S5 Mark II makes so much more sense. You don't get any of those bloated file sizes. Anytime you're talking about a codec that takes up gigabytes every other second, it means you're going to need a storage solution that can support it, which means if you want to keep all of your work going back even a year, you're going to need hard drive after hard drive. You're going to fill up an eight terabyte hard drive in no time. Whereas it's just shooting in H.264 and H.265 will make more sense if you plan on keeping your B-roll. At the end of the day, both of these cameras are awesome. Let us know which one you like best and why. And a massive thanks to Lumix for sending out the S5 Mark IIx for this review. It does go back to them if this video has been helpful. Please leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos, and stay tuned. I'm going to be reviewing this. And if it's up at the time you're watching it, I'll link it up in the cards over here. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon.